No, there's so many problems with this car. Hey friends, it's Len here from 1A Auto. So I've got a top problems video for you. This one's gonna be on a third generation Ford Focus. Ford Focuses, as we all know, have a lot of problems. We're just gonna go over some of the top problems that we've come to find. A good news that I have for you is 1AAuto.com has a whole bunch of quality parts that you can install in this vehicle as needed. And of course, our YouTube site, well, you already know, if you're not subscribed, make sure you do it now. Let's get into it. For our first problem, we're gonna talk about a stalling condition and believe it or not, this is gonna to have to do with fuel efficiency. Let's assume that you just went ahead and filled up that gas tank with $4 plus a gallon. You're driving down the road and the vehicle stalls out on you. Oh, that's not good. You're a little bit worried. You try starting up the car again and it crank, 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 cranks. It's stalled out. And at this point, people are starting to honk. In this instance, the code that you're probably gonna find is a P1450. Essentially, it's gonna tell you that you're having an issue with the fuel tank purge valve. Essentially, it's part of your EVAP system and that part's gonna be located under your hood. Now from under the hood, let's have a look down along the driver's side of the engine. Right in this area right here is where your EVAP canister purge valve's located. Some of the symptoms you might happen to notice if you're having an issue with this purge valve could be obviously you have a running rough condition where maybe the engine seems like it's shaking around or even a little bit of a lack of power situation. Obviously the stalling, that's gonna be a big issue. More than likely you're gonna find that you have a check engine light that comes on the dash. When that happens, typically it's gonna be within about 20 miles of a fill up. Now in our particular application, we had an issue with this valve where it was stuck in the open position. It can get stuck in either direction, either closed or open. Either way, you're gonna find a check engine light and obviously you're gonna have a running condition. For us, it was getting stuck open. What does that mean? Now essentially that makes it so the vapors that are inside of your fuel system or inside that charcoal canister that's supposed to help with the emissions of the vehicle, it's being allowed to go ahead and make its way all the way up and into that intake and then get burnt up inside that combustion chamber, which overall wouldn't necessarily be such a bad deal if the computer was actually asking for it. When it asks for it, it wants it. When it doesn't, it doesn't want it. That's gonna cause a running condition if this valve isn't doing its job right. Here we go. First a stalling and then not starting and now it doesn't start at all, no crank. Now, here's our second problem. So we checked the battery and we checked this fuse, but believe it or not, there is one more fuse that we have to check and that's gonna be located in this area right in between here, which is essentially why I left this cover off. Now what I wanna do is go ahead and get this air filter housing out of the way so we can have a nice clear view in here and you can see exactly what I'm talking about. I'm just gonna go ahead and zip this out of here and let's have a look. Before we take this apart, let's disconnect our negative battery terminal. This is a 50 amp fuse. It's pretty much a high energy fuse right here. You can see it has a yellow wire that leads to it. Let's go ahead and take this right off of here so we can have a closer look. Looking at the back, you can see a nice clear cover there. Once again, you wanna to try to take a peek inside that area. Look to see if it looks like it's corroded or damaged. Typically what happens inside here is the two connecting points that are supposed to make contact separate slightly. They'll sit right next to each other and sometimes you'll be able to start the car, other times you won't. Oh yeah. Our third problem involves your electronic power assist in your steering system. Inside vehicles that have the electronic power steering assist system, what you're gonna find is you have several sensors that are located inside of your steering column. Now, some of the sensors that are gonna be inside this system could include a torque sensor and also a steering position sensor. Essentially, it's gonna to need to be able to communicate with the computer of the vehicle so it can tell the computer exactly how much pressure it takes to be able to turn this steering wheel. Some of the things that you might happen to find if you're having an issue with a steering torque sensor might be your steering wheel while the vehicle's running and you're not even touching it, you can see it doing this a little bit. Or maybe you might happen to find while you're driving it, it seems as though the steering feels fine, it has assist, and then next thing you know, you have to grab onto it and try to turn it and it's taking almost all of your force, especially the slower you're going or even if you're at a stop. If you're at a stop, it's gonna feel like there's no assist on this at all. If you're having an issue with the steering torque sensor, you're probably gonna find that you have a check engine light code that comes on. Now that's essentially telling you that there is an issue and it wants you to try to figure out exactly what's going on. You're probably gonna find a code that says B2278, which essentially tells you that you're having an issue with the steering torque sensor and it's something that you're gonna need to replace. 
To do that, you would just get right inside here. You'd start taking this apart. But of course, before you start taking anything apart, you want to make sure you know exactly where you're going to. You want to make sure you have the part. And don't forget to disconnect that negative battery terminal. Oh yeah, this is my jam. What? What is going on? I'm in the passenger seat and you're probably wondering why. Well, if we put the key in the on position and we start touching on all these buttons, nothing's happening with the radio. You already saw that. It's kind of annoying, so we need to figure it out. I'm on the passenger side because I'm going to be getting underneath the passenger side dash. Before I do that, make sure you have hand and eye protection. Let's get this panel out of the way. Looking under here, you can see your inside fuse panel and behind that is your body control module. We're not gonna be doing anything with the body control module, but we do need to have a look at the fuses. Now there's three fuses that could affect the radio operation. Fuses number 79, 85, and 88. Now as we look at this box right here, you're gonna be able to see, if you look closely, some numbers that are located on the black next to each of the fuses. The number on the top right of each of the fuses is the number for the corresponding fuse that's next to it. So let's start by looking for fuse number 79. That should be a 15 amp fuse and it's this one right here. It's blue. I'm going to go ahead and make sure that the key power is off. You do not want to pull any fuses with the key power on. Let's have a closer look at this on the bench. Over on the bench, you can clearly see that this fuse over here on the left is blown. Looking in between those two tabs, you can see that it has that area that isn't making a connection anymore. The one over on the right is the one that is still in good condition. You can clearly see that it goes all the way across from one end to the other. Now that you've seen what a blown fuse looks like, let's grab a brand new fuse from warningauto.com, insert it, and test that radio. All right, now we fixed that radio issue. Wait a minute. What's going on with the transmission now? All right, so let's talk about problem number five. And this one comes down to transmission shiftability issues. On these cars, you might happen to find that you have a shiftability issue where it seems as though the transmission can't figure out which gear it wants to be in. And even you might find that you have an issue with the reverse gear. The main problem for this issue would be a ground issue. Now, right behind this area is where the battery is going to be located. You can go ahead and follow that battery negative and you're going to find that it leads right over to this area where it connects onto the body of the vehicle. There's going to be several other ground straps that are in between the engine and the body of the vehicle that you're also going to want to check. This one's right out in the open, so it's going to be the one that we do for this diagnosis. Go ahead and disconnect the negative battery terminal. Yep. There's our problem. Now that leads me over to talking about this area right here on the body of the vehicle where that cable connects onto. Looking at it, you can see it's painted the color of the vehicle. When they made this vehicle, they just went ahead and painted everything. After that, they went ahead and put a nut on the backside there that has the threads for that bolt to go through and it should hold it. The only ground that this cable is able to make through this area is through the mounting bolt threads. That might not be enough for all the voltage that's going through there and it could potentially cause an issue. What I like to do is make sure I clean up this entire area right here so it's sanded clean, fresh metal. Same exact thing in this area right here on the back side of this where it connects the forward side as well where the bolt's going to be touching against. All this is super important. Also, if you do have any of the corrosion that looks like this or worse, you need to clean it. It makes sense. Just go ahead and do it. Now, some of these problems did seem like they were a little bit of a big deal, but we tried to give you some easy and inexpensive fixes for these particular problems. If you like the video or even love the video, go ahead and smash on the like button for me. It would mean the world. While you're at it, go ahead and subscribe, ring the bell. That way there you, all of your friends, can be kept up with all of our latest content. Thanks. We're going to show you exactly what happens here. Now, our first problem, believe it or not, believe it or not, nah. Now our third problem is gonna involve our electronic power steering steering a system. What? <laughs> wow. I'm trying. Try again. No! Is that okay or?